my equation in the rate law x and y has to be found experimentally why a and b are not used they were confused they were happy with this rate law because uh, they were able to solve questions the theoretical value and the experimental values were coming out uh, were matching but they were confused why why this is not matching have you ever thought why this x and y has to be determined experimentally why it is not matching with a and b we thought a lot and one of the chemists came up with the idea he thought okay let's see the reaction mechanism and let's see what happens there correct so when the chemists saw the reaction mechanism they saw that generally in a reaction one or two or three molecules the react and combine and they boom bang and they form a product correct molecules combine the bang and they form a product also they found that the balanced equation never gives a true picture of how the reaction happens this is the reaction and this is a balanced reaction looking at this it looks like 6 plus 3 plus 1 10 molecules are reacting with each other to form the product but this balanced reaction is not giving a true picture something is hidden behind this mask the balanced reaction will never give the true picture why because this mostly the balanced reaction which we see they are not in one step they are multi steps right so we have this term called elementary reaction reaction which take place in one step is called elementary reaction and complex reaction reaction which take place in more than one step for example this is a complex reaction if you see this reaction mechanism of this reaction it takes place in more than one steps just to understand why in the rate law the x and y were not matching with the coefficient of the reactants so they found that most of the reaction we see is not a elementary reaction they are complex reaction they don't take place in one step so they came up with a term called molecularity of the reaction is a very very important concept it will help you to understand the reaction mechanism right so it tells the number of reacting species taking part in a elementary reaction please note it is number of reacting species in elementary reaction So the moment you talk about the molecularity of a reaction, you talk about only elementary reaction. We are not talking about the complex reaction. Correct. Example: three molecules, boom, forms a product. So in this case, the molecularity is three. Please note once again: when you talk about the molecularity of reaction, you talk about only elementary reaction. We don't talk about complex reaction. Complex reaction. But when we talk about the rate law. we don't care it's a complex reaction simple reaction we don't care even when we solved all the questions of uh, rate law we were not even introduced with this term of complex reaction and the uh, simple reactions so rate law doesn't matter but for the molecularity of the reaction we will talk only about the elementary reaction correct and in that elementary reaction the number of species that take part that will tell you the molecularity of reaction typically we have unimolecular bimolecular and trimolecular reactions only in unimolecular reaction one reacting species is involved only one reacting species for example if you see this is the one reacting species it bonds on its own and you get product for example decomposition of ammonium nit NH4, NO2, it will decompose into N2 and PH2, or radioactive decay. Also, we can say these are all. Please note, these are all what they are not complex reaction. They are elementary reaction. Once again. molecularity of the reaction this term is capable i mean applicable only for 
elementary reaction. So the first one was the unimolecular reaction where you have only one species involved in the reactant. The next is bimolecular. It involves collision between two species. Two species A and B. They collide, bomb and they get a product. For example, dissociation of hydrogen iodide. I have 2HI. It will give me H2 plus. Or CO plus NO3 gives NO2 plus CO. These are the examples of my bimolecular reaction. Please note these again, these two are my simple reactions. They are not complex reactions. Right? They are my simple reaction or we call elementary reaction. The next is trimolecular reaction. Here the collision between three reacting species take place. Example, if you see three comes, react bomb and get a product. For example, 2NO and oxygen react to form NO2. This is an example of trimolecular reaction. Please note, these reactions are only for simple reactions. Molecularity concept itself is for simple reaction. The probability that more than three molecules combine is very less. And therefore, molecularity greater than three is not observed. Please note, Molecularity greater than 3 is not observed. So we talk about this complex reaction. For example, this complex reaction I have. So this must be taking in more than one steps. These are multi steps. Each step will be a simple reaction. Correct? And molecularity term itself is only for simple or elementary reaction. So if you want to find the molecularity of this, find all the steps. And for each step, you'll have molecularity actually. Right? And then the slowest step will give you the order. We'll explain that. Just understand this term now. Molecularity of the reaction is only three. Unimolecular, bimolecular, trimolecular. Why? Because it is observed that more than three molecules they never combine to form product in one step if this is the reaction we are seeing we have six plus seven plus three ten molecules are combining that means this is they are not combining in one step they are combining in multiple steps right because this reaction seems to be of tenth order but actually this is second order reaction experimentally it is seen it is second order reaction and why it is second order? The molecularity will give you the answer for this. Correct. Now, since I told this is a multi step, it will have so many steps. But there has to be a step which will control the rate of the reaction. Obviously, slow step. The weakest link is the determines the strength of a chain. The slowest step will determine the rate of the reaction. For example, a big crowd is leaving a theater and they are leaving the theater after a movie and they are all leaving through a very small narrow exit door. So the time for the crowd to leave the whole building is nothing but the time for the crowd to pass through that narrow road or narrow door. Same thing. So the rate of the whole, this rate of this reaction, if it has let's suppose six steps, right? The slowest step, this let's suppose slowest step, the rate of the slowest step is nothing but the rate of reaction. The weakest link in the chain determine the strength of the chain and same thing as I told the example of the crowd leaving a cinema hall. Or your traffic also if you are passing through there is a narrow passage. So the time it takes for the cars to move from city A to B, let's suppose there is a city A and there is a city B there is a distance of let's suppose 100 km but let's suppose there is a small narrow passage here and only one car can go, right? But so let's suppose the car can drive at 100 km per hour in this highway. So if the distance is 100 km, the expected time for a car to reach A to B is one hour. But there is a small passage here. All the vehicles are blocked here. All the vehicles are blocked here, right? So 
the speed is very very less so it will take more time for this car a